Happy Friday, everybody. Big waves to you. Good to see you out there. Yes. I want to tell you, this week out in Louisiana, we've, we have had a really good time. But I'll tell you this, and whether you're on Facebook and you're watching this live, you're watching a recording, or you're on here right now on our Zoom, please let us know where you're tuning in from. But what I love about traveling is this community is popping up everywhere we go. You know, last night I got to experience Cheryl um, um, there in uh, Bozer City and, and, and Ronnie. Got to experience you and so many others, Dr. Kenneth. I could go on and on there in Mississippi. And it's really gave me a couple of things. Gratitude for this community, uh, appreciation, realizing the love, the support, and just what can something turn into if the right people are connected and they start connecting their right people. And so it's powerful. It was a <laughs> It's been powerful for me. So we're going to finish the day up today or the week up this week with hope, hope. Um, and hope, Andrea, can you remember, I'm trying to think who got, could you look and see who got hope? Was it, I think Tracy Kennedy's not was hope, but I, but I want to give a shout out. I had it wrote down. I apologize, but hope. Margaret. I, oh yes. Margaret. Margaret Whitten. So hope. Here you go, Margaret. Hope, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. You know, when I first saw this word, it seemed like it was going to be an easy word to look at, but it was tough. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I think why it was tough was because I, I have lost hope in things in my life. And so when I studied this word, I question, I question the profession I'm in right now that I love dearly. And I say all the time, I found something I can retire into and not out of. There's been times in my journey here where I've lost hope, lost some hope, not all of hope, but I've lost some hope, just being honest. And as I was driving, as I was thinking about this word, as I was talking uh, to them about this word yesterday, I thought, you know, what has allowed me to keep on in my career path right now? Because I've had some valleys, man, I've had some valleys that I could share with you. I actually shared with the group yesterday some of the valleys that I've had in my profession right now. But hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Have you ever been in a dark place? And I'm, I, I'm, I'm using my profession right now because that's where I went with this, okay? That's just what came out to me. It's the journey, right? We always talk about it. Somebody that has success, it's, it's not about the destination. It's not about the hill, the mountaintop everybody thinks it's about. It's about the journey. It's about all the valleys they went through to get there. And man, I've had some darkness at times. But being able to see some light. And I believe the difference between a victim and a survivor is hope. I believe when you start hearing people have a victim mindset or I've had a victim mentality, it's when I'm starting to fade with my hope. I hope this is making sense. And when that happens, when a person loses some hope, it's really, really hard to keep striving and contributing in a positive way. Right? You st I, I, I've, I've questioned my own, am I doing right? Am I, is this really meant for me? And I've, 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 when I'm at that place, it's very challenging to contribute in a positive way. Can anybody feel that? Can anybody been there? So let's shift gears. How can I cultivate hope? Right? If there's something in me, if God's speaking into me, keep going, son. 
even though you're in a valley, how can I cultivate hope so that I can contribute more? Number one, I got to have faith. I got to have faith, belief that there's something bigger than me, better than me. It's more than just about me, Brent. I'm going to tell you something. And, and Myra's on here. Myra knows exactly what I'm talking about. I got to give a big shout out to Tad Nibley. Coach decided to jump on this journey with me a year or so, two years ago in, in this profession. And today, you never know what the ripple effect is, but I watched Tad Niblett make a video that he was totally outside of his comfort zone. But you know what that man's got right now? He's got hope. He's got hope. And he would not have that had Coach not showed up and shared this opportunity with him. And that's just one example. Fate, and it's so it's bigger than Coach. It's bigger than me. Gratitude. This week's taught me gratitude. Gratitude, focus on thankfulness, thoughts, and feelings. I'm, I'm grateful. Even when I'm in a dark place, John Frick, I'm grateful for the things around me. And I got to find those. And I got to see those. I gotta, and then the last, I got to love. I got to realize that, that, that who's out there in this time where I can gain more hope that really loves me. Have I reached out to somebody because odds are they really love me. And then who, who do I love? Because I got to know that I got people's got my back and they got to know I got their back, Anthony. And when we got that, it's strong. It breeds hope. And so think about that. If there's ever hope struggling in you like there has been in me many a times and there will again, I got to look for faith, I got to look for gratitude, and I got to look for love. And those things will steer me back on the path of hope. And then the last thing I want to say, I know I've went over, is hope, when you look at the acronym, here's where I pulled this, helping others, helping other people excel. That's what I saw today in the Tad Niblet video. Helping other people excel. And there's so many times, I want you to think about this. This is something challenging. We had a gentleman on here several months ago named da Damon West. Coffee bean. He is moving mountains with his mess. So many times we don't want to make our mess our message. We want to hide because of our pride, because of our ego, because of our past experiences. And we won't truly share with other people around us our mess. But our mess is what inspires hope. Last night I was in front of a group and I was sharing my mess of why I started in the industry of network marketing. It's not where I'm at today, but I, I go back to my mess. And when I was thinking about hope, why do I why do I make my mess my message? Why do I tell them that this is why I'm doing this or this is why I did this? Because it inspires hope in the people that can sit there and go, me too. I'm I'm there with you. I don't have a retirement. I'm there with you. I need more help in my life. I'm overweight. I'm whatever it is. We inspire hope in people with our making our mess, our message, and Damon West does it the best. He took the mess in his life, and he's using it as a platform to share his message, and people are going, me too, me too. I can relate. Jeremiah 29, as I close, says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's already laid out for us. Hope and a future. Let's go get it. Coach? Hey, thank you, Brant. And yes, Damon, um, he's pretty incredible, his story. Um, if you have not, if you weren't on here and, hear, and heard his story, and if you haven't read his books, I really encourage you to do that. But uh, hope, it's kind of like Coach said, there were so many avenues and in, in, forks in the road that I could have taken and I was really struggling on which way to go so 
I apologize right off the bat if I seem a little scattered on talking about hope this morning. So, but just bear with me. I think there's some pretty good nuggets in here. So, you know, first off, hope is an expression of confidence in life. You know, I haven't even really thought about it that way, but it really is. It's, it, it's an expression of confidence in life. You know, hope gives us the best feeling and it gives us the ability to imagine beautiful things. Think about all the beautiful things that you've imagined. That's because you have hope in what you're trying to get to. You know, however, there are always times when we lose hope, isn't there? There's just times we lose hope. You know, but those beautiful things that we had imagined due to hope previously to the tough times, it can help us regain our hope and happiness. So, you know, if we want to truly live with joy in today's world, guess what we've got to have? Hope. We've got to have hope. You know, here's some words that are strongly associated with hope that I believe we need to continuously focus upon. I'm not gonna really go into uh, a lot of depth on these words because I think it's, we all understand these words. But in order to have hope, I think we number one have to have belief. You know, belief is so important. We have to have confidence. Even when we're like coach was talking about, when we hit that very, very low valley, we still have to dig up with confidence and know that we can get through it. We also have to have what Coach talked about, faith. You know, uh, in the Bible, it talks about faith, hope, and love. And uh, we grew up, and, and that was often, often told us, those are the three sisters, faith, hope, and love. It could be the three brothers, too. But you also have to have optimism. You know, I, I really feel sorry for people that are not optimistic because if you're not optimistic in what you think about, you're going to be, honestly, I think a very miserable person. So I think that that's the things that you have to, those are words you have to really hang on to, you know, so how, how do we keep hope alive, especially during the times we're in that valley? You know, I think all of us have different meanings and I think we all can agree on just the few that I've written down here. First of all, again, it's belief. We have to believe that we can achieve our goals. You know, I don't know if any of you guys know who Gary V is, and he's he's a little he's a little on the edge, uh, but I follow him on Instagram. He's a little rough around the edges, but he is one of the guys, and I, I kind of compare him to Coach Palmer in a way that he believes in the long term. If you buy in and you believe in working on your goals, that you can achieve these goals, it can't happen instantaneously. And so we have to have that belief. It may not happen as soon as we want it to, but we have to believe that we can achieve our goals, even if it takes a while. We've got to reflect on our past successes. You know, I'm a true believer in that you do not need to live in the past. I agree with that, but I think there are times in our lives that we do have to reflect back in order to help us to be able to step up to get out of that deep well. Do we have to reflect back to know that we can do this? You know, pray and meditate. Focus on the positive. Do acts of kindness. Lean on your faith in God. Read only positive things. That's a big challenge in today's world. If you turn on the TV or you read anything in the news, it's all negative. Turn it off, turn the page, find something positive to follow if you want to build up hope. Watch motivational videos, but mainly keep chasing your dreams. It doesn't matter where you're at, keep chasing your dreams. Now, when I heard the word was uh, hope for today, I don't know why, but I automatically thought about that movie back in, the, I think it was the late 90s, uh, Hope Floats. I don't know if any of y'all saw that. It's a really cool movie. But um, there, are, there are two things that I want to read, two quotes that came out of that movie that I think are very, very good for us to really close on today. It says, beginnings are scary. Endings are usually sad but it's what's in the middle that counts. So when you find yourselves 
at the beginning, just give hope a chance to float up and it will. And then the last one that I want to share with you, pain is real, but so is hope. So again, it's kind of choices. It's choices we make. So I hope and I pray that you guys have a very wonderful day and a very blessed weekend. And I look forward to seeing everyone on Monday. And Vince, I want to say, I see that new grandbaby behind you on your background. <laughs> He's a cutie. Love y'all. <laughs> Coach, that was powerful, powerful message this morning. We love you guys. We're grateful for you. Billy Grady, we're holding you to it. Yep. Retreat, Coach's Corner Retreat, coming soon. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. We'll see you back on Monday. Blessings. Thank you. Have a great, Bye, Bye, Have a great weekend. Bye, Coaches. Have a great weekend.